All right, today we're going to start the newest book club, Spirit Animals. This is the first book in a series. We can tell that it's in a series because right here it says book one. All right, I found this picture of the series on Google. All right, this is book one. Here's book two, book three, book four, book five, book six, and book seven. And then when you finish the whole series, it's really awesome to read this book, The Tale of the Great Beast, and it tells you the story of what happened before all of these kids met their great beasts. And then after that, there's actually a second series that tells about what happens later on. And this is the after series, the second one I was just talking about here and it's called the fall of the beast so if it says the fall of the beast at the top you're in the second series okay book one is here book two book three book four book five and book six so if you really like the first series of spirit animals which i hope you do then these would be the next books that you could read and when you finish this one, there's a special book. This one is called Tales of the Fallen Beasts. And it is written by the original author of the first book and the other authors who helped write these other books. And they got together and they wrote this really cool book to end the series. I really like this one too. Now, the reason that I spent two minutes explaining that is because I personally really love series. Just like I would rather watch a TV series than a movie because I really get to know the characters. And in these books, there are four main characters. They are shown on the first book cover, which we're reading. Connor, Roland, Maylin, and Abeka. And they summon four spirit animals, Brigan, Uraza, G, and Essex. Okay, so let's get started reading chapter one. Chapter one, Brigan. Given a choice, Connor would not have picked to spend the most important birthday of his life helping Devin Trunswick get dressed. In all honesty, he would have he would not have volunteered to help Devin Trunswick do anything, ever. But Devin was the eldest son of Eric, the Earl of Trunswick, and Connor was the third son of Fenray, herder of sheep. Fenray had incurred debts to the Earl, and Connor was helping to work them off as a servant to Devin. The arrangement had begun over a year ago and was set to last at least two more. Connor who had a, to hook each fiddly clasp on the back of Devin's coat correctly or the folds would hang crooked and he would hear about it for weeks. The, t the fine material was more decorative than practical. If caught in a storm, Connor knew that Devin would wish for a simpler, more durable coat, one without clasps, one that might actually keep him warm. Are you done fussing around back there? Devin asked in exasperation. Sorry for the delay, my lord, Connor replied. There are 48 clasps, and I'm just now linking the 40th. How many more days will this take? I'm about to die of old age. Are you in inventing numbers? Connor resisted a sharp reply. Having grown up counting sheep, he probably knew his numbers better than Devin. But arguing was n with a noble caused more trouble than it was worth. Sometimes, Devin seemed to deliberately tempt him. It's my best guess. The door flew open and Dawson, Devin's younger brother, burst into the room. Are you still getting dressed, Devin? Don't blame me, Devin protested. Connor keeps napping. Connor only gave Dawson a brief glance. The sooner he finished the class, the sooner he could get himself ready. How could Connor fall asleep? Dawson called. 
giggling. Everything you say, brother, is so interesting. Connor resisted a grin. Dawson seldom stopped talking. He often got annoyed, but he could sometimes be pretty funny. I'm awake. Aren't you done yet? Devin complained. How many are left? Connor wanted to say 20. Five. Think you'll summon a spirit animal, Devin? Dawson asked. I don't see why not, Devin replied. Grandfather called a mongoose. Father produced a lynx. Today was the Trunswick Nectar Ceremony. In less than an hour, the local children who turned 11 this month would each try to call a spirit animal. Connor knew that some families tended to form bestial bonds more regularly than others. Even so, calling a spirit animal was never guaranteed, no matter what your family name. There were only three kids scheduled to drink the nectar. The odds were against any of them succeeding. It was certainly nothing to boast about before it happened. What animal do you think you'll get? Dawson wondered. Your guess is as good as mine, Devin said. What do you expect? A chipmunk, Dawson predicted. Devin lunged at his brother, who scampered away, giggling. Dawson was not dressed as formally as his older brother, which allowed him freer movement. Still, Devin soon caught him and tackled him to the floor, pinning him down. A bear would be more like it, Devin said, grindling his elbow into his brother's chest, or a wildcat like father. First thing I'll do is have it taste you. Connor tried to wait patiently. It wasn't his place to intervene. You might get nothing, Dawson said bravely. Then all I'll be is the Earl of Trunswick and your master. Not if father outlives you. I'd mind my tongue, second son. I'm glad I'm not you. Devin twisted Dawson's nose until he yelped, then stood up, brushing off his trousers. At least my nose isn't sore. Connor will drink the nectar too, Dawson cried. Maybe he'll be the one to call a spirit animal. Connor tried to look invisible. Did he hope to summon a spirit animal? Of course, who wouldn't? He couldn't help hoping. Just because nobody in his family had ever done it since some obscure great grand uncle decades ago didn't make it impossible. Right, Devin chuckled. And I suppose the Smith's daughter will summon one too. You never know, Dawson said, sitting up rubbing his nose. Connor, what would you like to have? Connor stared at the floor. He had been asked a direct question by a noble, so he had to answer. I've always gotten along well with dogs. I'd like a sheepdog, I guess. What an imagination, Devin laughed. The sheep herders dream of calling a sheepdog. A dog would be fun, Dawson said. And common, Devin said. How many dogs do you have, Connor? My family? Ten, the last I counted. How long since you've seen your family? Dawson asked. Connor tried to even to keep his voice even. More than half a year. Uh, they'll be there today? I expect they'll try. It depends on whether they can get away. In case they couldn't make it, he didn't want to show that he cared. How novel of you, Devin sniffed. How many clasps remain? Three. Devin turned around. Let's not dawdle. We're running late. All right. I want you to finish reading the rest of the chapter. This is the map found before page one. It is of Erdas. Erdas. So this is the name of the world that this book takes place in. Now Connor is from Trunswick. That's the city. It's on the continent of Yora. Yora. Okay, that's very important for you to understand. Now Connor family are shepherds. They have flocks of sheep, like in this picture, and their job is to make sure that the sheep are safe. 
Now, this story takes place probably where they don't have technology, okay? So, animals and farming were very important to these people, okay? He said he wanted a sheepdog, which in this picture we can see. That would help him be a better shepherd. Now, on the cover of the book, which of these kids do you think is Connor? He's a shepherd, so he has a shepherd's crook. So we can tell that this is Connor from Yora. Before we conclude this video, I wanted to tell you about a few of the words that you're going to see quite a bit in the book. The first one is nectar ceremony. So nectar is juice or fluid from plants. So they're drinking something and it's from plants. And ceremony is a public celebration for an event. So this could be like a wedding or a quinceanera or anything. It's some stuff that people come to. Okay, the next word is spirit animal. Now you'll find lots of different definitions for spirit animal, but animals, but in this book, it's an animal that has a connection to a person. And these people in the book can summon the spirit animal. So the person wants the spirit animal to appear and they like will it. They like want it so much that it happens. And summoned would be the past, the past tense. So Devin's dad is the Earl of Trunswick, and an Earl is the owner of the land, usually the friend of a king, and the Earl is in charge of the peasants. He's the leader of the, the town, and peasants are our regular people. Now, the next word is green cloaks. This is a word you're going to hear a lot. The green cloaks are all bonded to spirit animals. Every one of them has a spirit animal. They are in charge of the nectar that we talked about earlier. And remember, bonded means that they have that connection to the spirit animals. And the green cloaks are a group of people who wear green cloaks. Okay, so you can look on the cover and see which of the kids are wearing green cloaks. I added the word bonded at the bottom because this is a word they use a lot, bond or bonded. And that means to have a connection with something. When you're a baby, you form a bond with your mom and dad because they hold you and play with you and hug you, stuff like that. So nobles, this last word that we're going to look at today, are wealthy people in a kingdom. So we don't have them in the United States because we're not a kingdom, we're a democracy, whose family have been important for years. So usually, they uh, at some point were friends of the king or a queen and then they become these people that own the land and are in charge of all the peasants. Okay, so that will help you while you're continuing to read the book.